Welcome to Assassin's Creed Black Flag, the greatest pirate game of all time, and what some would call the best Assassin's Creed game of all time. Unfortunately, I can't agree, due to the lack of historical accuracy, like the pirates being straight. In the male-dominated world of piracy, homosexuality was very common. Who knew that those eye patches pirates wore were actually used as eye protection for all the seamen they took to the face? Haha, <laughs> seamen? Get it? In August 2020, I made this video, where I suggest that this game had aged badly and I didn't like it. The comment section came for me like I just made an apology video using a ukulele. It was time for me to jump back in and try to understand why everyone loves this game so much. We play as Edward Kenway, who is Welsh, so he prefers the company of sheep over both men and women. We're currently chasing down an assassin who tried to take our cheeks against our will, but he's surprisingly fast with all that weighty clothing. Luckily, Edward is sick at free running, as pirates were closet parkour enthusiasts. We stop for a moment and admire the view, as everyone knows when chasing a target, it's important to also appreciate the world around you. The assassin begins shooting at me like I was his classmate, so I score him with my blades like a true Brit. We don his outfit and find a letter in his pocket to meet a few lads in Havana. So now I'm an assassin, I can do things like dive into a pile of leaves without shattering my spine, I come across a geezer about to be executed, and the sea turtles don't look like interfering anytime soon, so I hop in and save him myself. His captain unfortunately got murdered before we could save him, so we offered to step in and pilot that bad boy for him, and just like that, we have a new ship. Old mate then proceeds to breaststroke over to the ship in full clothing with a duffer coat and boots on. When we arrive on the vessel, there is a crew on board, who I guess were just going to watch old matey get murdered on the beach while they enjoyed lunch. So we set sail into the open waters, where your mum even pops by for a brief appearance. It's always nice to see her. Just as I am having a great time, we get pulled out in to everyone's favourite part of Assassin's Creed, the modern day. Oh, for fuck's sake. Everyone here is speaking a mixture of French and English, so I assume we must be at Ubisoft's headquarters, but no one is grabbing my ass or sexually degrading me, so it can't be. So I'm getting a tour around the place when this lad starts giving me the eyes like he's trying to intimidate me. He's wearing three-quarter length cargo shorts, however, so it's impossible to feel any sort of emotion other than turned on. The office is pretty nice, there's colourful beanbags to show this is a light-hearted working environment, but there is also a dead guy underneath my desk. Hopping back into Edward, and we're in Cuba, which in 1715 was more than just a place for American convicts to escape to. As you can see from the skeletons in the cages, it's a very welcoming place, and there's even cats roaming the streets. I however couldn't pet the cat, so this game is an automatic 1 out of 10. Me and my new mate Steed go for a bev at the local, but not before I can satisfy my need to climb the tallest building everywhere I go. Steed gets robbed while I'm up here, so I chase down the pickpocket, where the game wants me to just tackle him. I believe in sending a message, however, so I 360 him a few times, then hop on his back like Charles Oliveira and hit him with a rear naked choke. When I first started training jujitsu, I took the name rear naked choke too literally, and actually stripped down naked before performing it. It's safe to say I was kicked out of the gym, but I also received some weird DMs from my coach afterwards. Anyway, I take old mate's body with me, but I get seen by the guards, so I have to make a swift escape. Luckily, I seamlessly blend into this tree, so I lose them pretty quick. Me and Steed finally get that bevy, where a few English lads recognise Edwards, which he obviously can't be having as he needs everyone to believe he's Duncan, the assassin. This turns into a bar fight because, obviously, we're British. We can't drink in peace. After the fight, we find out Steed's sugar got stolen, so we do everyone's favourite Assassin's Creed staple, a tailing mission. When they said they were going back to their roots with Mirage, what they meant was there's going to be 25 tailing missions and a 95% increased chance of me hanging from my ceiling fan by the end of the game. I need to steal a key so the game sets up a haystack where you can stealthily accomplish this. I of course fumble that hard and end up fighting the Spanish guard with my bare fists, as I also forgot the button I needed to equip my sword. With my new key I break into the fort, fill my pockets with steed sugar and exit with an incredible dive. The form, the arch, the velocity, if Edward wasn't a pirate slash assassin slash little cutie, he could have easily been an Olympic diver. Due to the water, Steed Sugar is now ruined, but my boy doesn't seem to be too upset as he's practicing black magic at the ship. Leave a like if you also practice black magic in your spare time, or white magic. We're inclusive over here. I head off to meet the lads who. I head off to meet the lads that wrote Doku. 
I head off to meet the lads that wrote Dunk and the Letter, who luckily don't have a clue what he looks like. When I arrive at the estate, I see Spanish gardeners, so it's nice to know that the Spanish also use Spanish people to garden. I meet the boys and we all bond, chatting while shooting some targets, because what else are you going to do in the three minutes it takes to reload a pistol from the 1700s? They then ask me to display my assassin skills on some dummies, where they can't tell the difference between some pirate and an assassin with years of training. So I meet Grandmaster Torres, and it turns out these lads are Templars, the assassin's biggest rivals. Although Templars are smelly, you can't help but admire the drip. We look fresh out of Cuba Fashion Week. While they're deep in discussions, I slip my hands in their pockets and steal any money I can find. Later on, I have to protect Torres as we escort a prisoner, as the assassins may want to try and steal him from us. They do indeed try that, but I think they forgot that they're assassins, as they don't dive from the rooftops or use smoke bombs, they charge us with knives and shoot guns from the rooftops. Our prisoner escapes, so I have to chase him as he's extremely athletic. He's barefoot too. He doesn't even have proper running shoes and he's still hitting feet like this. It's impressive. We tackle him to the ground because he has less muscle mass than a heroin addict and hand him off to the Templars. Just a few hours later, we're back on the estate, but now I'm trying to break him out of the prison I just put him in. Edward may be charming, but he isn't the smartest. When I reach the prison, I find a load of guards covered in blood laying on the floor. They've all either been murdered or hit that time of the month at exactly the same time. My new Templar our friends figure out I'm not Duncan, so they send me off to Sevilla as punishment. But I've heard it's a nice place year round. Edward then has a flashback, but it must be more of a hallucination, as his wife is a human woman, and not a sheep. So on the ship to Sevilla, I made a new friend who helps me break out of these cuffs. It was at this moment I realised. I completely misunderstood the story of Black Flag the first time around. I thought it was a pirate adventure, but it's really a biracial pirate love story. Just look at the way we choke out Spanish men in tandem. I can't wait for him to choke me out like that later. I find my gear and go from boat to boat, taking out all the guards and freeing the prisoners to make a crew of my own. They'll never leave because they'll always owe me for saving their life. As a boss, it's important to have one up on your employees so they never leave you. That's why I have my editor's nudes, so I can leak them in case he ever tries to leave me to edit for another YouTuber who would probably pay him better. I steal a ship and we make our way through this storm, which has got us as wet as standing next to another guy at the urinal. In that situation, you can either a stare into his eyes until he backs off, or B, smooch him and maybe find the love of your life. Out of the storm, and me and the boys set sail, with the mindset of everyone being equal on this boat, apart from Ada Wale because he's not white. The boys even then start singing a majestic sea shanty. Wow, I have no idea who made that, but I bet they're extremely talented, hot, cute, funny, and have a massive penis. The game makes me sail to a small island where I have to hunt iguanas and ocelots, which seems really out of place. But then I remember, this was released at a time where every game had to have a hunting and crafting system. I can even climb on this small tree to evaluate the space, but it's more useless than chemo at a hospice. So we arrive at a place I don't remember the name of, and meet a couple of Edward's old mates who'll be joining us at sea. I also nearly die in a small barrel explosion, and no one comes to check on me some friends they are. I make my way further into the island, where I pickpocket this woman, but she only has four reals on her. Jesus Christ, she's poor. I almost want to put the money back in her pocket, take her out for lunch and pay her rent for a month. I have to recruit some more crew for the ship, and I'm out here having a busier transfer window than Chelsea in January 2023. One of them is about to be hung, so I gotta save him, but I sort of got swept up in how cool the combat looks, completely forgetting he was swinging six feet off the ground. This time I save him using a cinematic shot to the rope, which is extremely impressive given the accuracy accuracy of guns in the 1700s. That thing could have easily backfired, or accidentally hit the recruit in the head. I get to know some of the locals on the island by getting my ass whooped on a game I had no idea how to play. I actually bet all of my sheep on that game, but rather than letting my anger get the best of me and killing the guy who beat me, I instead kill a few of the local band members. Self-growth. So we sail out to do some pirate stuff, you know, sinking other ships, singing shanties and blowing each other, just the standard. I even get into a fight with a huge ship that's much cooler than ours, so I do what all good captains would, hide behind a big rock. It hunts us down though, so we're forced into a fight, and somehow we come out on top. Edward, coming on top of ship battles and his shipmates. What a guy. One of my crewmates, James Kidd, comes to us with a plan to rob some plantation, so we once again have to participate in a thrilling tail mission. You can't keep getting away with it! 
He can't keep getting away with it! This one also takes to the water, as we have to tail the ship, because other than any other video game mechanic ever made, what is more fun than tailing a ship through the water? Anyway, we steal his sugar, rum, and metal, the healthy pirate's diet, and I get a reward for staying out of combat, even though I was literally just in combat throughout the mission. Nice. We hit the seas again, and the water is a more beautiful blue than the chloroform rag I used to knock out women. I don't do anything weird with them, don't worry. I just steal their debit cards, so I can deposit money into their accounts to make up for the wage gap. Anyway, I needed to do my first assassination job on one of the Templar lads from earlier, as he knew I was still kicking about, and we couldn't have him telling his friends. We have to make our way through this jungle, which was actually a really cool moment that felt unique for an Assassin's Creed game. It reminded me of old school Tomb Raider, only Edward is way cute than Lara. We find his ship, climb up to the top, ready to do a cinematic assassination, but the game is shit and targets the guy next to him, giving away my position and forcing me to assassinate him in a much less cool way. This was like me in school, practicing what I'm going to say when approaching a girl I like over and over and over again in my head, but when I actually get the chance to talk to her, I just end up asking her if she prefers Boeing 737 or Airbus A320s. This island is now my own, so I make it feel more homely by opening up a boat shop, a bar where you can play checkers and lose horribly then drown those feelings of depression in an alcoholic drink, and a general store where you can buy swords, clothes, or little snacks for the road. Or the sea, I guess. I also wanted to open up a brothel, but of course it's the most expensive one. Those dirty dogs at Ubisoft knew exactly what they were doing. Alright, I'm gonna hold my hands up and admit, I didn't give this game enough of a chance last time, I just played the first couple hours. Now after playing more than the first couple hours, it's pretty fun. I like it. I don't think I'm ever going to love it like everyone else does, but it's definitely gone up a few ranks for me. If this video gets enough support, I can even finish the game in another video if you'd like to see that. I love you all. It's not gay to kiss the homies goodnight, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.